All right, viewers, here it is as promised. We've got you queued up for a little time travel, taking a trip back through BCTV's history, and we'll do it one select board meeting at a time. Just messing with you, we wouldn't do that. Although, we've got some vintage select board footage in there for sure. Anyway, here it is, 40 years of BCTV. First, some basics for any BCTV noobs out there. Rattlebro Community TV. Oh, that's our building right there. There's our office and the studio. Okay. BCTV is a PEG or public education and government TV station. Nowadays, it's just called a community media center. In recent years, that means more than just our channels on the cable lineup, just channel 8 and 10, but also a pretty serious web presence with new content posted daily on BrittlebroTV.org, our YouTube channel, Facebook page, online, all the time, all across the universe, you name it. These days you can count on BCTV for well over a thousand hours of new video every year, with content that comes in every flavor imaginable, thanks to the station's free speech mandate, and with new and better technologies making it ever easier to create and share local content, that thousand hours could well be two thousand in the decades to come. But once upon a time, even one hour of programming was near impossible at BCTV. That's right, I'm setting us up for a little history here, and we'll start with the 1970s. Ah, the 70s, am I right? Not that I was born yet, but anyway. This whole thing began in 1976 with a reformer columnist by the name of David Chase who started scheming on a way to get local select board meetings broadcast on TV. It was in 76, and David Chase worked the year before that to get to the point where we were ready to have a board. It was always a constant struggle. We had to make it up. You know, and we had no equipment to speak of. To put it in a little context here, at the time that BCTV was officially founded, there wasn't a single other public access station in the state of Vermont. In fact, there were only a handful in the entire country. And the FCC mandate that would bring nationwide public access to the fledgling cable TV industry was just a few months old. So it all goes without saying that there was absolutely no money for a venture like this either. But with a healthy dose of blood, sweat, and tears, by 1977, they had begun broadcasting those select board meetings live over Warner Cable on Channel 8, and in the process, they managed to create the BCTV we've come to know and love today. So that pretty much takes us into the 80s. And by all accounts, the first real instances of volunteers getting to have some fun. With the select board meetings under their belts, BCTV set its sights on becoming a full-fledged TV station, adding local variety shows, arts programming, interview shows, community events, and more to the resume. You know, once the lights go on and the cameras start rolling, there is this excitement that you're, you know, you're producing a television program while you're on television. Shows like Take 5, a weekly program that promised any and everyone five minutes of screen time in the studio to perform their talents, 30 Minutes from Marlboro, hosted by Marlboro College's Rod Gander, and of course, the legendary late-night spoof Brattlebro Tonight with Roger Bland, which brought new levels of outrageousness to the cable airwaves, even intersecting at times with the select board coverage. You, know, you have life-size models of the Brattleboro Selectmen. Now at the Brattleboro House of Wax, for 25 cents, anyone can come in and touch these models. And this is Larry Smith. And Isn't he a little heavier than he is in real life? Pretty cool so far, right? Okay, time to head into the 90s. Now, the early 90s brought an abrupt end to that golden age of creativity when Warner Cable took over the station and pumped it full of recycled national material, shutting down any local content. But thankfully, by 1993, BCTV was back in action. We started officially as the, the first executive directors of the new iteration of BCTV, which has been non-existent for the last two or three years, is actually starting up again. The renewed focus on the region's art scene a new wave of civic engagement. Giving rise to a generation of shows like Brattleboro Live, The New Show, and The Pulse of Brattleboro, an on-the-street interview program with then-state rep Daryl Pillsbury that would span three decades to come. On into the new millennium we go. The 2000s and the digital revolution gave rise to a new era of programming, as all digital media acquisition and non-linear editing made creating shows worlds easier and cheaper, ushering in ever more local personalities and stories. The 2000s also saw the addition of a new channel for BCTV, Channel 10, allowing for twice the airtime, while Channel 8 remained the public channel, 
Channel 10 was given reign over government and educational programming. Shows like The Pulse were joined by the likes of Naked Brattleboro, as host Frederick Noyes took to the streets with his signature query, What's Your Deal?, while the interview genre enjoyed a renaissance at the hands of folks like WTSA's Tim Johnson. All right, the 2010s are next. A decade with a decidedly uncatchy name, but plenty more goodness for BCTV nonetheless. A new contract with Southern Vermont Cable in 2011 meant that BCTV officially octupled its select board coverage, adding regular meetings from the towns of Vernon, Guilford, Dummerston, Putney, Newfane, Townsend, and Jamaica. Yes, I can say those all off the top of my head. 2012 brought with it a brand new HD studio for BCTV and the capability to create entirely new kinds of programming, including shows with guests Skyping in from anywhere in the world. Shows operated entirely by the on-screen talent without any crew in the booth at all. Heck, even shows with fiery explosions between segments instead of cross dissolves. And speaking of explosions, the explosion of mobile technologies in recent years has seen a new generation of content producers created seemingly overnight. Producers using the camera already in their pockets to document the community around them and share those videos on BCTV. The 2010s also marked BCTV's foray into local news, a venture that helped solidify a new foothold in the community while strengthening ties to the region's other media outlets. So what's left? Well, if you'll grant me one last minute here, perhaps a look into the future is not a bad idea. What do the coming decades hold for BCTV? Well, of course only time will tell, as they say, but if history can be trusted to repeat as it so often does, BCTV's future should be a bright one. If this look back over the years has any big takeaways, I believe it's this. The technology, the town, of course the hairstyles may change along the way, but the things that motivate people to use BCTV remain the same. That drive to document the community around us, to tell its untold stories, to challenge the status quo, that's what's defined BCTV over the decades. Each era at BCTV has brought with it a new generation of passionate people who have given it their all to continue the traditions of creativity and ingenuity at the station. The question is, who will it be that steps up next? Next.